Introduction. The following is a brief list of some notable events in Chinese history since the year 1900. I link these events to their year to provide a means to contextualize other events and provide a general feeling for the period. These events are exceedingly complex. Often their story involves many people and spans several years. I will not go into too much detail, other than to provide a brief background for contextualization. Please sit back and join me for Markers in Chinese History, Imperialism, Nationalism, Socialism, Capitalism. 1900, Boxer Uprising. Between 1800 and 1900, foreign imperialist powers increased their economic interest, cultural influence, and military presence in China. The Qing rulers, after a series of military defeats, ceded more and more to these foreign powers. Foreign powers invested large sums of money in China, building railroads, mines, and businesses. Christian missionaries roamed the countryside, converting Chinese, often destroying traditional temples in the process. Foreign powers also used their superior armed forces to control claimed areas and protect their investments. Chinese people became increasingly threatened, fearful that China was about to be carved up like a melon between the imperialist powers. The Boxers were a spiritual and militant group that emerged in the countryside around 1898 merging with other societies. It was not entirely organized. In 1900, the Boxers rampaged through the countryside, killing foreigners, Chinese Christian converts, and destroying anything foreign. Emperor Cixi eventually came out in support of the Boxers and ordered the Qing military to assist them. The Boxers took over the capital, Beijing, and attacked foreigners who had now retreated to foreign compounds. The imperial powers acted quickly, Japan, Russia, Britain, the United States, France, and Germany mobilized their forces in China and eventually put down the boxers in an unfriendly manner. Many boxers were executed. The king's state, defeated, was forced to sign a treaty that paid massive indemnities to these powers, as well as allowing foreign powers to occupy various cities. The Boxer Rebellion showcases three important aspects. 1. The level of foreign interest, investment, and imperialism in China. 2. The weaknesses of the Qing state when compared to foreign powers. 3. A budding feeling of nationalism among Chinese people. 1911. Revolution. Between the Boxer Uprising in 1911, the Qing regime became increasingly unpopular, especially after making railroad deals with foreign powers and increasing taxes to raise revenue to support a modernized new army. The spread in Western philosophy in previous decades had helped create movements for government reform most notably Sun Yat-sen's Revolutionary Alliance. Revolutionaries in China infiltrated new army units. In 1911, new army units mutinied and demanded the construction of a parliament. Yan Shikai was elected as the first premier of China, and later backed by Sun Yat-sen. In February 1912, Puyi, the last emperor of China, abdicated. The absence of the Qing left the power vacuum, which was filled by various local warlords, leading to great political fragmentation on top of the existing foreign concessions that Qing had in control. Yan Shikai became one of the many warlords competing for power. 1919, May 4th Movement. China aided the Allies during World War I, and in return was promised the German possessions in China, especially Shandong. The Treaty of Versailles gave this area to Japan. On May 4th, 1919, students gathered in Tiananmen Square to protest the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. The protest was followed by a massive outpouring of literature about how to save the country, usually nationalistic and anti-imperialist. Both the Chinese Communist Party, Kuomintang, and the Chinese Nationalist Party, Kuomintang, emerged from this movement. 1931, Mukden Incident In 1931, Japan invaded and seized Mukden. Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of the nationalists, ordered his troops to retreat. By the end of the year, all of Manchuria was under Japanese control. The Mukden Incident marks an increase in Japanese aggression towards China. 1934, Long March. After the death of Sun Yat-sen, the Communist Nationalist Alliance broke apart. Communist forces fled from the nationalist-controlled cities to the countryside. The breakdown of the alliance led to a full-scale civil war. Chiang Kai-shek surrounded Mao's communist forces in Jiangxi, and with superior military equipment, supplied by foreign powers, was winning. The Long March was the Communist retreat from the Nationalist forces to Yan'an in the north. Under Mao, the Communists marched 6,000 miles in 370 days. The march exhausted the Communist forces. Of 80,000 that had left, 
only around 9,000 remained. Mao described the Long March as the first of its kind in the annals of history, a manifesto, a propaganda force, a seeding machine, declaring the Red Army is an army of heroes. 1937, Japanese Invasion. In 1937, the Japanese launched a full-scale invasion of China. The Japanese were very aggressive and drove nationalist forces from their city bases, including their capital, Nanking. Japan committed many cruel atrocities during the invasion, such as mass killings and the use of chemical and biological weapons. Perhaps the best known atrocity, known as the Rape of Nanjing, occurred during this invasion. The Japanese invasion helped forge an alliance between the nationalists and communists. 1949. Communist Victory. The 1945 defeat of Japan brought the end of World War II, and an end to the fraying alliance between the communists and nationalists. In 1949, the communists crushed the nationalist forces, who retreated to Taiwan. On October 1st, 1949, in Tiananmen Square, Mao declared the creation of the People's Republic of China. The communist victory brought an end to much of the fighting that had devastated China for almost two decades. 1953. First Five-Year Plan. The first five-year plan was a plan for national economic development, modeled off those in the Soviet Union. During these five years, thousands of Soviet technical advisors came to China to assist in economic development. China paid for Soviet aid by selling government bonds and forcing peasants to sell a quarter of their crops below market price to the government. The plan implemented many socialist ideas, such as collectivization of agriculture, state ownership of industry, and centralized planning. During the first five-year plan, both agricultural and industrial production increased, although agricultural growth lagged behind industrial development. In total, the Communist Party saw the first five-year plan as a relative success. 1956, Hundred Flowers Movement. Advanced education in China was costly. Intellectuals usually had a background the communists labeled as reactionary or capitalist. In 1956, Mao encouraged open critique of the communist regime. Mao's famous phrase, letting a hundred flowers bloom and a hundred schools of thought contend is the policy for promoting progress in the arts and the sciences, was his thought behind the movement. Intellectuals grasped hold of this and critiqued almost every aspect of the Communist Party. The Democratic Wall in Beijing University was created during this time, covered with posters criticizing the party. The movement resulted in mass unrest and riots for reform. The party thought criticism had gone too far and cracked down. Many intellectuals were labeled rightists, which ended their career. Others, less fortunate, were sent to jail or labor camps. The crackdown left many wary of speaking out against the party in any form. 1958. Great Leap Forward. The Great Leap Forward was the second five-year plan. The second five-year plan pushed for further gains in agriculture and industry. The initial phases of the plan were met with great enthusiasm, but in the end, it turned into a disaster. Harmful policies combined with bad weather greatly reduced agricultural yields, eventually causing a famine that killed millions. Intellectuals after the Hundred Flowers mostly remained silent about harmful policies. The failure of the Great Leap Forward saw the rise of a clique in the party that supported professionals versus Mao's masses. 1966. Cultural Revolution In 1966, Mao launched the Cultural Revolution, closing schools and colleges to free students for revolutionary struggle. The more moderate party members were removed from the party. Students formed Red Guard factions, highly attached to the cult of Mao. In many cases, these factions terrorized people, introducing mass chaos lasting almost ten years. The People's Liberation Army was eventually called in to put down the often armed Red Guards. 1969, Zenbao Island Incident. In 1969, the Soviet Union and China engaged in an armed border conflict, with casualties on both sides. This conflict highlights the Sino-Soviet split. The Sino-Soviet split was a result of increased tensions and diverging philosophy between the Soviet Union and China. The once close friendship turned into one of intense rivalry. Even today, this tension remains. 1972. Nixon opens China. Increasingly isolated after the Sino-Soviet split, China looked for new allies. In 1972, President Nixon of the United States visited China and met with Mao. Negotiators on both sides set aside the issue of Taiwan, agreeing to disagree in a peaceful manner. More importantly, 
The visit formally opened trade and diplomatic relations between the United States and China, changing the Cold War balance. 1976. Mao dies! On September 9, 1976, Mao, the great hero of the Chinese Revolution, died from natural causes. Mao's death was mourned nationwide, and many countries also paid their respects. More importantly, Mao's death set off a power struggle within the party. Deng Xiaoping, once banished from the party during the Cultural Revolution, eventually consolidated his power base and became the de facto leader. Deng and his supporters implemented economic reforms, labeled the Four Modernizations. The Four Modernizations consisted of agricultural industry, science and technology, and national defense. These modernizations were linked to a more capitalistic economic policy. 1989, Tiananmen Square. In 1989, students gathered in Tiananmen Square to protest for more voice in the government. The government eventually sent in the People's Liberation Army and successfully dispersed the students. The protests in Tiananmen Square were covered by the press around the world. Western nations saw the army's intervention as repression and shutdown of a pro-democratic movement. 2001, World Trade Organization. In 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization, signaling its intent to be the equal of every country in trade. 2008, Beijing Summer Olympics. In 2008, China hosted the Summer Olympics, putting on a grand display for the rest of the world. Hosting the Olympic Games was China's coming out as a global power, just as successful as any other nation.